Hey, what's up? It's Madden here with Josh Thompson. What's up, man? How you, How you doing? doing? Good, nice to meet you. All right, so you got the fight October 9th, HP, uh, HP Pavilion. Jay-Z, they call him Jay-Z. You're going to take this guy down? You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win the fight. If I can get him to the ground, that'd be great. If I can be on top, that's great. Uh, I do know I don't want him on top of me. <clears throat> you know, um, he's got some vicious ground and pound. I mean, he's, he's a little fire plug, and so it's going to be a great fight. You know, I've told everybody this, is that, you know, I can go out there and fight the fight of my life and still lose this fight, so I have to make sure that I'm ready. So I got a, like a really kind of quick glimpse of watching you train out there for a second. Like, give people an idea of like what you go through physically to get ready for a fight, and just kind of how much stamina it takes to go in there for a few rounds. Because I don't think people know how hard it is. Yeah, like this fight, like I've been I've been dealing with a lot of injuries just for the last probably two three fights. So to be honest, for this fight, I didn't really I haven't even trained. Like I just my trains consists of like walking to the mailbox, the fridge, <laughs> things like that. So I haven't really trained. Like I've ran maybe to the corner. You know, and that I thought that was good, and then that was it. So, but uh, normally I train pretty hard, you know, and that's that's why I have a lot of injuries. And it's a lot of <clears throat> it's a lot of um, like get up in the morning, and run, you know, a lot of uh, plyometric style training, muscle endurance, uh, cardio, and then mixed in with a lot of striking and just sport specific stuff from kickboxing, striking, lots of drilling and techniques. So it's been um, it's been tough, but I've been working on it. So, tell me about the mental aspect too, like is, it, is there a lot of like scouting now that comes into the sport? Do you have like video and stuff like, uh, you know, like a lot of sports use video or stats to kind of figure out what a guy's going to do in a certain situation. How much of that uh, is mental and how much of it is just instinct? Um, a lot of it is instinct, but the thing is, is there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. You know, you, when, you form, when you're fighting guys at my level, um, you know, we're like the top of the food chain, so we've seen these guys fight a lot, you know, and so <clears throat> I don't really need to go back over and watch video. I maybe watch it once or twice just to kind of get, get it fresh in my mind after watching, after seeing him fight so many times. But, um, you know, the thing is with him is that he, he took a, a long layoff, you know, for about a year and a half because he had some knee surgeries. <clears throat> and so his game is going to change a little bit in the process of that. There's a lot of things that you develop. You develop bad habits or you just develop uh, your training changes because of your injuries. You know, I've gone through the same thing. So <clears throat> there's a lot of things that he's probably changed in his game just because of the surgeries on his knee, things like that. Probably doesn't kick as much. Maybe, you know, he's real good at probably avoiding leg locks and submissions and things like that. So, um... I'm, I'm really looking forward to to seeing the new Jay Z. It's gonna be he's gonna be aggressive. He's gonna be um, you know he's gonna let things go on the feet. And uh, you know I think he's he's gonna fight a little bit probably like a little bit of a safer fight, trying to get me to the ground, trying to take me down. So and what do you think we're gonna see from you that's different since you've been <clears throat> off for a while? What's what's the new Josh Hobson look like? You know I, I tell you what it can't be any worse than the damn one that I showed the last fight. I tell you <laughs> that. So um, <clears throat> from the Healy fight, you know I just I don't know what happened. Um, you know there's times you just show up to the event and it's just not your night. And uh, I was able to still ink out a win, but and get the submission. But the thing is, is, you know, it's one of those nights where you just show up and you're thinking to yourself, I don't feel like fighting tonight. And I think you've heard a lot of fighters say that they show up to the venue and they're just thinking to themselves, this is something doesn't feel right. I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable. And that's kind of how I felt that night. And then I think it showed in the ring. But I was able to get the win. And um, you know, for this fight, I, it's, it's got to be a lot better than that. So I, I'll tell you what, I'll take you. I'll take anything better than what I gave that. Yeah. Well, but you know, there's something to be said too for. <clears throat> A top guy in eSport is a guy who can win on an off night, you know what I mean, and still find a way to get it done even when they're not, they're not bringing their best. You know? Yeah, you know, another thing too is that, you know, no, the, Pat Healy was a relatively, not, I can't say unknown, everyone knows who he is, and he's a journeyman, I guess you would call him, I don't call him a journeyman, I call him someone that's just, he's, he's very well rounded, he, he, he knows how to, to put pressure on a lot of the top guys, I and mean, he's beaten a lot of the top guys that are in the UFC from Dan Hardy, Carlos Condit, uh, Paul Daly was in the UFC at the time. You know, he's beaten those guys, and that was at 170. Now he's dropped down to 55. So he was relatively like no one was giving him a chance to win the fight, and I was taking him serious. But I think I let a little bit of that all play in my mind that <clears throat> the media had him ranked as like a four to five one underdog, and uh, he went out there and showed that he was definitely didn't deserve to be that. And um, you know, and and, and it, he ended up giving me a, a lot of fits. Yeah. So uh, I can't I can't afford to. I think a lot of top fighters, what they do is. It, yeah, they can win when the when it's not when it's not going their way. But the other thing too is a lot of tough fighters tend to rise to the occasion when they fight tougher guys. When, when they know that the guys are supposed to be tough and things aren't supposed to be in their favor, I don't see myself being favored in this fight with Jay Z. <clears throat> I think a lot of people are going to underestimate me, possibly even Jay Z, thinking that you know he's beat a lot of better guys um, and he's fought a lot of better guys is what I think he thinks. And so he's going to come out there and he's going to try and, and you know and put me in my place right away. So I just got to make sure that um, I rise to the occasion and, uh, and make sure I stand my ground. Now, you live in San Jose, mm -hmm. fights in San Jose, gonna have the hometown crowd, like you're a popular guy to begin with, right? Do you feed off the energy of, 
of people at all, or is it just you and Jay-Z when you get in there? It's just me and Jay-Z, but I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely, <clears throat> the first time I fought here in San Jose, it was a lot of pressure on me. But then I realized, because my very first fight here in San Jose, besides fighting strike force kickboxing fights, I've been fighting, I've been fighting for strike force since when they were a kickboxing event. Um, but my first MMA fight, <clears throat> I lost. And so I was really down on myself. But then I realized as I was walking around town and training and like going out and having fun and dinners, people were coming up to me and saying, hey man, you fought a great fight, you know, way to rep San Jose, way not to give up, things like that. And that lets you know that your fans are gonna love you no matter what. So now for me, it just relieved all that pressure off me. Just like, I wanna go out there and just have fun. And I think a lot, you know, I didn't lose for almost five years, six years, something like that. You know, ever since the second show, after I lost that very first fight, I hadn't lost until last January. So, um, you know, and it would end up being one of the fights of the year, you know, my one loss. So it, to be honest, it's been, uh, it's been actually real nice being able to fight here in San Jose and just the fans and just, knowing that your hometown, no matter what, win or lose, they're gonna love you. I'm gonna see them on the street, I'm gonna see them at lunch, I'm gonna see them at dinner, it doesn't matter. They're gonna be like, hey, what's up, man? Nice fight, great job, and you know, they'll love you no matter what. Yeah, people will respect a warrior, you know <clears> what I mean? And, and everybody loses a fight or two in this sport, it seems like nobody rolls through undefeated, so. It's pretty rare. Um, so you've been at the top of 155, you lost the title, one of the fights of the year. You win this uh, fight with Jay-Z, you think yeah, you got another title shot coming? You know, that's up to Scott. That's up to Coker and, um, and Strike Force and Showtime and, you know, whoever else decides. I really don't care, to be honest. Um, you know, if I have a shitty performance, no, I don't want a title shot. But if I go out there and start to in the first, you know, everyone says, like, oh, if you go out there and knock him out in the first round, you think you want that title shot. That doesn't mean that I've learned anything from that, from that fight. You know, I, I caught him with a good punch and, you know, he went down. Whatever the, whatever the deal is, if I could have subbed him in the first round, second round, it doesn't mean that I learned anything from that fight. <clears throat> so, for me, I'm a lot harder on myself, so I want to make sure that, that uh, I have a good performance. I feel comfortable being, you know, fighting at the level that I need to be fighting at. But, um, <clears throat> I got to tell you, my last fight, I definitely wasn't comfortable with that. This fight, I'm expecting a big improvement. And, uh, you know, my training camp didn't go well. I didn't, I mean, today was actually the first day I've had that was really good today. I felt really comfortable and felt, felt really happy and getting ready for this fight. So I need to have a good tomorrow and a good Friday and, uh, <clears throat> and make myself feel better about you know going into this event and making sure that I have a great performance. Because if I don't have one, whether I win or lose, doesn't matter. I don't want that third fight until, with Gilbert until I'm ready. Right. I mean, you've got your own standards. And it's not just the guy you're fighting. You're kind of trying to get better every time now. Well, I'm not someone's going to turn down a fight if Scott says, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to fight Gilbert next. That's just part of being a fighter. You don't turn fights down, you know. I mean, if you're injured, that's different. You know, I understand that. You know, but um, you know, if you're if you're gonna offer me a fight, you know, then I'm gonna take it. That's just how it works. All right. How'd you get the nickname the Pump? <laughs> um, you know, I, obviously that was given to me when I was a kid, when I was like 19. So it just. It's the guys in the gym, you know. What I mean? <laughs> you don't give yourself. I, I can tell. I sit here and tell you a bunch of dirty stuff, but um, no, it's just it's just something that you don't you don't give yourself a nickname. And you're I'm stuck with it, and no, so you heard it. yeah, <laughs> everybody just you know. But you gotta understand, I'm 32 now, so there's a lot to change in 12, 13 years. I mean, I got that when I was just turned 19, so that was a long time. Ago. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for so sure. I can say, like I said, I can sit here and tell you a bunch of dirty stuff. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, October 9th, HP. You want to handicap the main event for us? Who, who you got now? You know, I'm gonna go. By, I'm gonna go with Nick Diaz because of the size, and uh, he's been fighting a lot of stiffer competition lately. And uh, I think he'll be ready for for uh, KJ this time. <clears throat> um, but you can never count KJ out. He's uh, my only thing is that KJ has been fighting at 55. Nick's been fighting at 85 and 70. So <clears throat> I think that the size will make a difference. Nick has come into his own since that fight, the first time they fought. So um, I'm probably gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Nick, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if KJ is able to uh, to put his hands on. Him. Should be a battle. I'm looking forward to seeing you get out there, man. You're in San Jose. We gotta we gotta represent. It's gonna be a great fight. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Man.